begins which begins on the 8th of march and it's just a month away preparations are still ongoing to uh, make everyone and every facility ready for the games my colleague billy shen caught up with a medical team who are very much uh, ready for the games this is a report from him since Team Ghana started camping at the Cape Coast Stadium ahead of the 2023 African Games, there's always been a background, the medical team, who have been coming in their ambulance to watch the players train. Now the 14-man team, which consists of psychologists, nurses, emergency specialists, and a dietitian, have always been watching the players train from dawn to dusk and follow them to their hotels to actually watch them on a 24-hour period. Now, the lead of the medical team, that is Dr. Papako Joimbro, explains the reasoning behind this arrangement ahead of the 2023 African Games. We've done medical screening for all the athletes, and we, we are with them both where they sleep and when they are doing, doing training time, so we can take care of their emergencies as soon as they arrive. We have made arrangements with the Cape Position Hospital Emergencies as well, so that should we have any emergency, we have a well laid down plan to transport patients to the emergency department for smooth assessment and treatment. So far we've been good. We have had a few injuries. The physios are doing a very good job by doing their massages for them. A few injuries here and there, otherwise nothing major has happened so far. The nutrition of various athletes ahead of the game is considered top priority for the medical team. And so there's a dietitian on standby who has explained the nutritional needs of each athlete. Um, I usually work around the nutrition side, making sure the athletes get their recommended nutrition, that for their breakfast, lunch, supper, and then the nutrients uh, from fruits, and then um, hydration as well. Also make sure those with specific nutrition needs, um, those who have allergies, those who have some intolerance, are well taken care of. During the screening, they report that to us, and then we make sure during their intake time, we have special meal for those. And then those with special needs, um, those who want to work within their weight ranges, also we help them to make sure they attain that so that they can um, have their optimal performance. So that's all we do. All our actions around nutrition drive towards the athlete and making sure they get their optimum nutrition for best performance. The 13th edition of the African Games is expected to start in early March. And as athletes are preparing feverishly for the Games, there's a medical team always on standby to make sure that there's optimal performance for the athletes. So that is it there from Belish and they're giving us bits and pieces of fire. The currently ongoing um, Africa Games preparations, the medical team are ready for the Games, which begins on the 8th of March. Now moving on to some football and hard to football member Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo has thrown his wear support to the Save Ghana football demonstration being organized on the 14th of February in Accra by uh, some journalism protests uh, of the poor running of football in Ghana as well as when organizers led by Sadeka Dam Sports Obama and Veronica Komi visited his office. This was what he asked to say. Concerning your hotel's mind, I support it fully. And I would say it's even long overdue. Leaders of this country should know that the source of their power comes from the people. And the people's game is football. It is their passion. So when that particular game is failing, then government must know that it's failing. That's all. Thank you. So that is from Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo there. His support uh, to the Save Ghana football demonstration. Now, uh, let's move on to the African Nations Cup and the semi finals begin today. Big matches coming up Nigeria against South Africa and then Ivory Coast against Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, Nigerian superstar Victor Oshiman has been passed fit for the game as he joined his teammate uh, on Tuesday evening uh, after a late fitness test. Oshiman has been declared fit and available for selection in the semi-final clash against South Africa on Wednesday. He has joined the team in Boake and has trained with the squad. A team spokesperson told AFP on Tuesday. So Victor Oshiman, after his arrival in camp, was had an interaction with the Nigerian coach, uh, Joseph Pesero, uh, which meant that, yes, he is ready and available, fit for that particular game. So Victor Oshiman, is ready. He flew from Boaké to Abidjan with the rest of the squad uh, to join the rest of the squad after his 
abdominal discomfort. So that's a big game in there. So Nigeria against South Africa at 5 p.m. and then Ivory Coast against DR Congo at 8 p.m. at the Alassane Ouattara Stadium. The first game is at the Stade de la Paix uh, at 5 p.m. Now ahead of the two big games, let's have a quick uh, listen to some thoughts of journalists who are in Cote d'Ivoire and have watched most of the games. South Africa do know they have their work cut out for them because they are playing arguably the best team in this tournament based on results, based on defense, and based on general play. It's been difficult for any team to beat Nigeria. So, uh, first of all, well, I would love to see Diara Congo in the final. I would tip Diara Congo for me to qualify ahead of um, Ivory Coast. But like I said, Ivory Coast have had that X factor in this competition, so you cannot throw them out. But uh, I'm tipping Diara Congo to qualify for the finals. I'm going to go with South Africa. So I'm looking at a final that uh, will have uh, South Africa and Diara Congo. That uh, is my dream final. But I think Nigeria has something that South Africa doesn't have. They have enough men who have the X factor. To so look at Mosi Simon, look at Adimola Lukman and look at the two men. South Africa can keep them quiet, but I think just one moment that could be fine again. If there's one thing that could give you that, I'll give it to Nigeria. Is that Ivory Coast have been moved by or they've been resurrected, looking at what happened to them before they came back to life. And um, they were nearly out of the competition, but something happened and it overturned. So look at how they've been able to squeeze out results. The mentality is working on their behalf. They have fans behind them and they are doing so well in recent games in terms of mentality. How they've been able to overturn some sort of results into positivity. So I think what will give Ivory Coast the urge over um, DR Congo is the fans and the mentality they've been playing with. I know DRC can cause a havoc. I wouldn't be surprised if they eliminate Ivory Coast. But there's one thing I'm assured of. If Ivory Coast have beaten Senegal, found a way to also uh, around Mali, I think they can do more than that in finding their way against the Al Congo. So that is it there from the journalists who are expected to be at the stadiums to watch the two games this evening. Now, uh, let's move on to some stories around uh, Egypt. And they have put twin brothers, uh, the Hassan brothers, in charge of their national soccer team with Hossam Hassan taking over as the head coach of the Team. Now, the Faris have also appointed Ibrahim Hassan, who is the twin brother of Hossam, as the team technical director. The Egyptian Football Association said on Tuesday that Hossam Hassan, the country's all-time top scorer with 68 goals, will succeed Portuguese coach Rui Vitoria, who was fired on Sunday after the team's disappointing performance at the Africa Cup of Nations. So that is there for the Hassan brothers. The two brothers, yes, uh, twin brothers, have been appointed as the new coaches for the Egyptian national National team Hossam is the coach and Ibrahim as the technical director. Now let's move on to uh, some results from the Asian Cup and two second half goals from Yazan Al Namet and Musa Al Tamari handed Jordan a place in the AFC Asian Cup final ahead of South Korea. Let's, um, that was a very disappointing result and Human Son together with his other colleagues had to bow out with shame. But Son says he is very proud of what the team achieved. Very disappointing, devastating about these results. And look, Jordan uh, having amazing, amazing journey this tournament. It's incredible, and they, I think, uh, yeah, we have to learning from from this kind of mistakes, and uh, we have to look, we have to go forwards, and we have to look forwards, and because there is no time to regret. And uh, look, a big, big uh, compliment uh, from Jordan's side, and uh, wish them all the best. But, uh, look, I'm, I'm having no regrets. Uh, I was giving everything, to be honest. And uh, look, it was a really, really tough competition, and in the Asia level, Asia football. It's going high and it's always uh, going to be hard, hard, hard games and uh, yeah, like like I said today, and uh, it was tough challenge again. So now I have to go back to the club and uh, be ready for for the rest of the season. Be ready for the rest of the season, according to Human Son. Later today, Iran will play against uh, Qatar at 3 p.m. in the second semi-final. Real Mallorca set up for a goalless draw against Sociedad in the Spanish Copa Dori semi-finals today at 8:30. 30 Atletico de Madrid play against Athletic de Bilbao. And in the German Bundesliga, F uh, FC Mainz 05 will play against Union Berlin. Jude Bellingham has become one of the top global stars in the last couple of months. He just became the face of Adidas football and also 
signed a new contract with uh, Gucci. Jude Bellingham has reflected on his life at Real Madrid since joining from Borussia Dortmund. Unbelievable. It's like playing at um, like the Coliseum. Like a, you feel like a proper gladiator, you know, which is it's just so cool. And, yeah, you just don't understand how big the club is. There's not really anywhere you can go where people don't recognise you. Um, uh, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. But um, yeah, uh, you, you just realise it's that step up in class, in, in everything really. Um, but also the flip side, when you come into training every day, the players are always quite calm. The coach is really calm and it's a good environment to work in and to, to just express yourself and be creative with your football. Feel at home in the city. My, my family's comfortable. Um, I've had friends over, really enjoy the city. The pe people and the fans are really respectful. Um, treat me so so nicely, which I'm really grateful for. And then obviously with the team, with the staff, I feel like I've been here for, for years. So um, yeah, really happy with the start. It's just about maintaining it now over the course of one season and many more seasons to come in, at this great club. So that is Jude Bellingham, but he's hoping to win more laurels with the Los Blancos. It's always important to, to perform individually, but it doesn't really matter if the team aren't winning. Um, so to see that, you know, that, uh, so far we're top of La Liga, um, one trophy already, um, top of our Champions League group um, so far. Uh, so good, obviously, out of the copper, which is unfortunate. But all in all, um, the thing that makes me most proud is the success of the team and that I've been able to contribute to that, really. Um, that um, the team and players in the team are playing amazingly well, which helps me so much. So, yeah, it's a, it's a team game and I'm, I'm really just trying to play my role and when the team plays at its best that's when I'm most happy. So that is from Jude Bellingham, Real Madrid's uh, top player at the moment. Now the International Football Association but I thought I expected to approve the rule change for use in uh, the FA Cup tournament for next season. That is the sin bin that allows players to be punished just to stay off the pitch and come on later. Yeah so the uh, football's lawmakers I found they're going to give the, the go-ahead for trials of uh, sin bins for dissent and tactical fouls in in top professional football. Um, the FA, from my sources tell me, are going to consider this both for the, the men's FA Cup and the women's FA Cup because they've led the trials in amateur football and they are going to seriously consider having it in the FA Cup. So people will say, is there too much tinkering going on around the laws of the game? Bad idea. A very bad idea here. Thanks now to the FA Cup today. And Aston Villa will be playing against Chelsea. By Unai Emery, who is the head coach for Aston Villa, has confirmed that Ezri Konsa will be out for two, uh, for three to four weeks with a knee injury. The defender sustained in Aston Villa's 5-0 victory at Sheffield United and is expected to be a very lengthy stay of the pitch. What can you tell us about Ezri Konsa's injury? And are you able to welcome back any players from injury tomorrow night? Good afternoon. Yes, he's injured. Uh, he's, he's, he's injured. He has a, a new sprain and uh, he is going to be not available, I don't know, three or four weeks, more or less. And uh, any players able to come back tomorrow? No, they are out as well. Uh, Lucas Digne is progressing very well, but uh, he's not available tomorrow. Pau Torres, he started tiny with the group and uh, he's going to be in the bench tomorrow. And John Duran still being injured. Uh, no more. Yeah, so that is it there from um, Unai Emery on Esri Consa. But Mauricio Pochettino demands patience and support from Chelsea's fans after their 4-2 loss to Wolves on Sunday. The Stamford Bridge Club dropped to 11th on the table after that loss in Chelsea has spent more than £1 billion on transfers since third Billy takeover in May 2022 but have little to show for their vast outlay. The 51-year-old host team face Aston Villa this evening in the FA Cup fourth round replay reveals how the owners still have faith in him we are demanding the support uh, to the team to the players because i know the quality and we know the quality of the player the players have an amazing quality the only problem is take time to build a team and and that is uh, you know the reality that we need to translate to the fans and the fans to be patient of course that we are going to to find a way to to succeed, too many things that we need to fix before to talk about tactics or about to talk football, but we are in, in trying to entitled to to fix all the things. To yes, as soon as possible, for sure we are going to yes to perform and be in the position uh, that the club deserve. You know. 
So that is the, the position the club deserves. That is according to Mauricio Pochettino. But away from Chelsea to Manchester United and Dwight York believes that there will be challenging times for Rasmus Holland. Manchester United striker but remains happy. The forward has found his core in touch. You have to have certain standards or people that you can look at to try and learn from. How you learn from them by watching them in training, watching them play, being among them. Now he's finding himself here at the top of it and nowhere to learn from. So I feel for the kid. I'm glad that he's got a couple of uh, goals. Is he our answer to success? I'm not so sure right now. He's still on that borrowed time. He still need times. But I'm glad that he's got a couple of goals that may have settled him down. And then another question, what are his strengths? Because I still not know what his strengths are. Because often enough, when you do your due diligence about players and you're paying 75 million for a player, is he fast, can he head it, can he shoot, can he dribble, can he, you know, these are basic common denominators in, in a factor of buying a player. So even to this day, I'm not sure what is actually his strength, but he's coming into a team that is struggling. So if you're coming in, no matter how good you are, or how young you are, or how old you are, you're going to be struggling in a team that is struggling, that is inconsistent. So I, I feel for the kid. And I think there will be some times that uh, you know, there's some challenging time ahead for him. There will be some challenging times ahead for him. Now, uh, to some boxing news, and uh, Alexander Usyk is confident that his heavyweight title showdown with Tyson Fury will go ahead on the 18th of May, as the date has been rescheduled. Tyson Fury suffering an injury to his eye made a bit uh, doubtful, but Fury has come out to confirm he's ready for the fight, and Usyk is happy that the date has been confirmed. God have plan. I don't know. Procent, I believe. So 100%? Uh, not 100%. 17. <laughs> but uh, I know uh, it will be. I just but, looked, uh, uh, looked back uh, for the all kind of uh, things that I went through. Morning hours where I woke up, the sparring partners, uh, the kilometers that I ran, uh, all the exercises I've done, and I thought, wow, what a tremendous job I have done. When I, with the help of God, will complete all the assignments, I can easily take three Tyson, Tyson Futures. We can take him at a time, or we can take one uh, Saturday, Sunday, and the third on Monday. That is from Alexander Usyk, finishing off with some tennis news. And Boris Becker has brought an end to his brief stint coaching seventh-ranked Holger Rune. The pair linked up in October with Becker initially helping the 20-year-old Dane Rune overcome a slump in form to end the season on an upward trajectory. But uh, the German did not travel to Australia, where Rune reached the final of the ATP tournament in Brisbane before being upset in the second round of the Australian Open by Arthur Kazo and Becker wrote on X formally Twitter, I would like to inform you that I will step down as the head coach of Holgerun with immediate effect. So that is from Boris Becker. He says he is tired and he has left Holger Ruins come. That will be all for sports this morning. My name is Kelvin Olson. As the sunrise continues, Johnny Hughes and the rest of the team are here. DJ Abiyam, as always, is present to serve you with some fine tunes. My name is Kelvin Olson. As I have a good Wednesday at 5 p.m. is Nigeria, South Africa, and at 7 p.m. is Cote d'Ivoire, DR Congo in the AFCON semifinals.